Okay. So uh, you have started recording, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. So as we discussed, Rajesh, uh, today we will focus on processes. So how many processes are there? You remember number? There are seven processes uh, exactly. So the seven processes are SU, which is starting up of project. IP is initiating a project. Stage managing stage boundaries, managing controlling stage. a stage, managing product deliverables, and uh, and closing a project and directing a project. Directing. So these are the seven projects. So they are part of the what is called as a software development life cycle (SDLC). Oh. So somewhere they also call it as SDLC. Okay. okay. It is a reform form of SDLC. So SDLC is equal to the process in Prince Two. Okay. So it always comes in uh, job descriptions and all. Yeah, knowing SDLC. So SDLC is nothing but the seven processes of Prince Two. Okay. So is okay. it in IT industry? Is it different, sir? No, no. It is the same thing. Earlier people used to call SDLC. When if the company is following Prince Two, then they will call processes of Prince Two. Okay. Interchangeably, they may use. Okay, so we'll start with the first process. What is the first process? Definitely anything you're going to do, you have to start the project. So yes, first sir. process is starting up of the project. Very simple. What are the purpose? The purpose of this process is to answer the question, do we have worthwhile and viable project? The project mandate is usually the only document that exists when the project starts. And this is not enough information for project board to make decision to start the initiation. So initially there will be only a project mandate. What is a project mandate? It just tells what you want output of the project and what is the budget available high level. So therefore the purpose of this process which is starting up of the project is to provide the project board with necessary information to judge if the project is worthwhile. They use project brief which will contain information about business case Another important purpose of starting a project is to prevent poor project from starting up. So basically it is eliminating any project which is not worth starting. So after starting up of the project, if they don't find the word, they will not go into initiation. They will just close it. So the process should be brief. Perhaps that's where we get the name of project brief. In fact, the aim is to do minimum necessary just to see if the project is worthwhile doing going to initiation. So startup of the project is just to go through the project charter and see whether the project makes sense, right? By creating a, a project brief kind of thing, not even a business case. So project brief and inside project brief, you will have some high level business case of it. And that will be presented to the stakeholder and the stakeholder will say, okay, whether we want or not. Generally, who does this is maybe you will have a project manager or a portfolio manager who will or a program manager who will do this in front of the stakeholder to get a so buy in. A big level people, the higher yeah. level. Higher. So <clears throat> quickly, what are the objectives? Starting of the project, the objective of starting a project are to prepare and make sure the following is done during the end of the process. There is a business case or a business reason. They should be documented in the outline of the business case. The business case document will not be completed un until the initiation stage. So we will start a business case, but we will not end. End of the business case is only until the initiation stage. Why? Because in starting of the project, you are not going into details. You are only at a high level. Then look at the project approach. Business yeah. case, is it a detailed one, sir? Yeah, business case has to be detailed, but it will not be completed only in starting up the project. It will go up to the initiation of the project. Generally, a business case is not uh, more than two, three pages, four pages. Otherwise, people will not read. So they try to keep it very short, precise, concise. We'll look into that. Uh, look at the project approach. Then choose the people you would work like to work to initiate the project. So if if the project is looking good, you will try to see if there are people available. Sometimes project is viable, but there is no resource availability. So that is also important to check in the starting of the project. One, whether it is viable. Two, whether we have people to do the project. Okay, you create the project brief, which provides information on the scope of the project and most of the information collected to date in this process. Create a detailed stage plan. 
to plan the work to be done in the initiation stage. So what do you want to do in initiation stage? You might have to plan it here. As you can see, starting of the project process, objectives are to provide project board with certain information and prepare for initiation. So what bottom line is to provide information to the project board to approve, not to approve and have and be prepared for initiation stage. That's all what starting of the project means. It's a very small timelines generally they have. If a project is, let's say, a one month project, then starting up the project could be just a project kickoff, two, three hours, that's it. So because of their experience, maybe like they will understand, yeah, is this viable or not? Yeah, yeah absolutely. If the project case is not, business case is not start stacking up, they will not do. Because it may say that this project will require, you know, one million fund, but there is no fund available, one million, so they will not do it or it doesn't have any priority. There is no business criticality to do the project or there is no resource available to the, to the project or you know the company has changed their, you know, their mission vision and this is no more required. So generally how, the, how this happens sir in, in, in the IT companies and all? No, no, generally what happens is every quarter or every six months, we'll have a board meeting where all these projects will be discussed. So before that, we do a starting up of the project to put it up. So let's say uh, in a company every January and every August, it will happen. So somewhere around December, we'll do starting up the project, which project we want to put it to the board. So one month people will work on these projects, create a project brief, business case, and present it to the project board, which will happen on January. So a project board on one on one or two days will look into all projects which are planned, approve half of them or whatever is viable, and then they will start uh, doing the project. That's how it happens. Okay. So internal projects we fund ourselves. External things we'll request from customers. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. See, okay. see customer will not uh, may may or may not fund, but they may say that it is critical. So you will have to find money from somewhere. Oh. Some projects could be very customer specific that customer wants. Then, you know, it is a go case. Sometimes in practice, they may not wait for green. They may start the project because they know it's a customer project is required. Only for formality, they will put into the project board and they will get approved. Okay, then they will work on it later. Yeah, and then they will work on it later. Okay, sir. So it's a very small thing. It is just pre phase. So generally, there may be one project manager which may be writing the brief for two or three because it is a small job. And then once it goes into initiation, you may have different project managers involved. Yes. Sometimes it is a product manager who does it. Right? A business will do it. You don't have project manager. You will get project manager only after initiation. It all depends company by company how things are. Sir, what's the difference between this project manager and this product manager? So project manager is the one who will run the project. Product manager is something who is who has the business case, who provides fund. He's yeah. a business guy. Has teams. So there will be a product manager who is owning teams. He will say, okay, these five features of the teams are required. Then a project manager will take over and complete with working with dev teams, test team, operation team. Yeah. Okay. So product manager is business guy, business stakeholder uh, who provides funding. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Starting of the project uh, ensures that sufficient planning is in place before initiating a project. The process is triggered after mandate is received from corporate project program management. The primary output of this process is to brief key activities now can you read these key activities because it will be important for you yes the key activities in the process are capture previous lessons lessons learned uh, appoint the executive and the project manager design and appoint project management team prepare the outlines of business case mm -hmm. create the project product description select mm -hmm. the project approach and assemble the project brief mm -hmm. plan the initiation stage trigger the direction of the project with a request to initiate the project. Hmm. So these are key one. One is to capture previous lessons. If there has been some lessons with the previous project of similar nature, otherwise you may not do that. Then appoint an executive and project manager. A project manager is somebody who will, as I was saying, sometimes you may not have project manager in the startup project. So you may need to appoint somebody who will take over. 
Your executive is nothing but the product manager, also known as executive, who holds the business case. Then you will design and appoint a project management team. So basically, who will do development, who will do testing, who will do operations. You will prepare an outline business case, not total business case, only an outline. Total business case may be in the initiation. Then you will create a product project product description. So what basically you are going to do in that project. Then you will create an approach, assemble the brief. You will plan the initiation because if you don't plan initiation, then you will waste time in the initiation. So it's better you plan now itself and trigger the directing the project process, which requests for initiation. So there is a directing the project process that you will read in some time. In that, then they will request to initiate the project. Okay, sir, so that is all they will do. Yes, sir, here appoint the executive and the project manager. So I, I, I while reading this, I found that uh, I, I thought in a different way, sir. Even before we are like completely make sure about the project, how can we appoint executive and project manager, sir? See, appointment doesn't mean that they have to work. Appointment is just to prepare, just to be ready. If the project starts, if we get approval, then this project manager will take over. If you don't appoint, then you will have a trouble that after the project gets over, it gets approved, you may not find a project manager. Then what you will do? So appointment is important, but that doesn't mean that project manager has to work. He may work only after you get a green signal. Appointment is just to identify. Okay. Just to identify. So during this period, will they give advertisement for project manager because they will get a lot of jobs, right? It's not this time, right? It's not the SEO time. So generally, uh, these two things are different. Okay. Uh, if they need people, they will appoint separately, not starting of the project. Starting of the project, generally, they will already have some people inside or, or sometimes it happens. They hire some project manager because they don't have internal project manager. Then you're right. Okay. At the starting of the project, they may go outside to the market and immediately hire somebody because they have to start the project. But uh, in most com companies, let's say 60%, it is done independently. So they will know that this year I have to do 500 projects. I have only 100 project managers. I need another 25. So they may hire. Okay. It's like they already know things, right, sir? Mostly. Yeah, yeah. Because it has been going years and years. Only if it is a company's new one, then the problem is there. The problem is there. But the <laughs> ideal world, idealistically, you're right. Yeah, at starting of the project, they, they should advertise and hire people. Yeah, but mostly the, it will it will happen only. Not happen because days, right, hiring and all takes two, three months. So they can't yeah. wait till that time. Sir, okay. here, uh, the prepare outline of a business case. In this, this outline means what, sir? Like very short or what? what yeah, outline means? means just the basic points of the business case. Like what is the project? What is the outcome? very high level you will put few things okay. then in the initiation you will go detail this is only for getting approval from pro stakeholders yeah okay sir then starting of the project uh, the executive is responsible for appointment of project manager project management team and creating outline business case executive is a business person a project manager is responsible for role description, capturing previous lessons, project approach, assembling the project brief, creating, updating daily logs, and creating an initiation page. So in case the project manager is appointed and he has joined, then he will do this work. Otherwise, sometimes, uh, you know, executives also can take up this role. In ideal world, project manager should do this work. So there may be one project manager who can be managing multiple starting of projects. Because okay. not all projects will go through initiation. So during this stage only, the previous project manager or some other company, uh, sorry, some other project manager will manage this for some time. Yeah, so you may have one project manager which will look care of five starting up projects. So he will go and update all this because these are small, small jobs. After that, three gets approved. Then he may pick one project and two more project managers will take over from him to do other two projects. That's how it happens. Yeah, okay, sir. Now, now, so that's all of starting of projects. So there's nothing much. It's a very small uh, phase process wherein only you have to do is to create a project brief, outline of a business case, appoint an executive project manager, and then uh, you know get an approval from project board to start to and uh, do the planning of initiation. So Sir, the second uh, learning from lessons you told. Right? How will they learn? Like. 
no no sometimes you have you know these are not one time project you may have done previously some project and something has not gone well correct so from previous projects you will have some lessons learned okay so you have to think that this is not first time you know month after month uh, six uh, quarter after quarter they have been doing the project so there will be some previous project which they have done so from that lessons learned they can use okay sir it's a continuous process so for example you did teams part 1 okay. in teams part 1 something went wrong so when you doing teams part 2 as a new project you will take the learning of teams part 1 okay okay let's quickly go to the next process which is initiating a a project so this is important now initiating a project means you have already gotten approval from the board project board this project has to go it is viable it has business it has business reasons it is important it has all it has a reason etc etc okay can you read this slide quickly so that you understand yes sir the purpose of this process is to establish solid foundations of the project enable the organization to understand the work that needs to be done to deliver the project's product before there is a commitment to significant spending hmm. this understanding is needed before deciding to continue with the project like any project like any project there are a number of important items to discover so there are a number of questions to ask about the project right. what are the reasons for doing the project and benefits and risk scope what is to be done and what will not be included when can products be delivered how to ensure the quality will how to ensure that quality will be achieved how risk issues changes will be identified and followed up how project progress will be monitored who needs to be informed and how often do they need to be informed and lastly how principle will be tailored to suit the project hmm. so initiation is the next phase so few now that they are going into detail they will ask full scope uh, you know what product we need to deliver risk so this is more of a detailed discussions they that uh, the team will have because now the project has been initiated they need to get in details okay any questions here yes sir uh, the reasons for doing the project and benefits and risks that previously only starting of the project we already discussed like why the project but still why still it is being asked why still uh, here it is required because now you have a project team also earlier it was just project manager and executive now you got a team so you need to tell the team that you know this project is because of this this reason these are the benefits and the risks right so everybody should be on at par so this has to be discussed and and not only here in every phase you should discuss the reasons of the project why because you remember there is there is a condition saying that project should continue only if there is a viability and the need for it yeah so that because is where every time we are yeah you should discuss this is very key because if you stop discussing about the reason for the project benefits risk you will not know why you are doing this project possibly you will not understand the criticality and the importance of the project yes okay let's read the key objective i'll read this slide so next is read the key objective of this process is to ensure that there is common understanding of one the reason for doing the project benefits expected and associated risk the scope of what is to be done and product delivered how and when the pro project's product will be delivered at what cost who will be involved in the project decision making how is the quality required to be achieved how baselines will be established controlled how risk issues challenges will be identified assessed and controlled how progress will be monitored and controlled who needs information in what format and all so it's more like previous slide just that it is more detailed in a bullet point so these are some of the questions that will be done in a practical practical case maybe few of the things we don't worry too much at the initiation but in an ideal world yes we should have all these things done for example who need information what format and this is governance Okay. how you want to do the governance like monthly reporting weekly reporting uh, how progress will be monitored and control are we doing some kind of graphs so that we monitor how much work we have done against plan versus actual risk risk issues challenges maybe we will create a separate risk issue and ch change uh, tracker so that we know all issues are tracked okay 
then how baseline will be established and control the original plans quality and all those all that is discussed within the project and agreed and signed off so like these are the things that uh, we are we have done it or are we planning to do we have to do as part of initiation these are the things we need to do we need to ask and do these things we need to write how what information how the governance will happen agree okay governance will be weekly every week we'll have a call we'll put a ppt how we will monitor the progress we will do some kind of jira board or some kanban board and things like that so this is what you have to do in the initiation okay okay let's discuss this yeah can you read this slide yes sir following are the activities performed in initiating a project process prepare risk management strategy prepare configuration management strategy prepare quality management strategy prepare the communication management strategy set up the project control create the project plan refine the business case assemble the project initiation document so what is risk management strategy it is nothing but if there are risk how you are going to manage the risk generally it is just a tracker in which they will start writing the risk one risk two risk three what is the mitigation you know what are the actions taken so that will be your risk management strategy configuration management what is configuration management do you understand uh the versions yesterday you told versions absolutely configuration management is versioning how you are doing versioning we'll agree on versioning strategy the next is qms quality management strategy quality is very important because the product which you get should be should be of a good quality so you will agree on quality like it should pass all the acceptance criteria it should pass all the test we should not allow any p1 p2s and things like that that is your quality management strategy communication management strategy is nothing but the governance how you are going to tell the stakeholder how you will have weekly meetings what formats you will use so that's all in communication set up a project control so project control is nothing but it will be part of the directing of the project like how you will control the project so project manager will say that i need you to provide me update every 3 days we need to work on you know how much we have delivered what is the cost incurred and also that's why they will put some control you cannot just go and say that i want to buy a product so that also has to go through the control they will see the budget and approve not approve also known as cab change board cb change board change board what create a project plan so definitely you have to create a project plan like how many days it will take to develop to design develop test and finally put it into operation so that is on the project plan who creates the project plan uh, project manager rajesh project manager yes refine the business case like you said no in the initial case start up of the project we will only be creating outline of the business case it's what in the initiation what? phase we'll go and refine the business case because now we know everything now we know the project duration now we know how many teams are involved now we know what quality and also we'll refine the business case yes sir and assemble something called a pit document project initiation document project initiation document is nothing but it's a it's like a planned document where you will put your risk management you will put your configuration management you will put your qms you will put a project plan you will put up your, so all the top 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 items you will put on inside your pid so pid becomes one document which will have all these information or link to these documents yes yeah, sir sir uh, one thing sir sir prepare the quality management strategy in this one so mm. uh one, one doubt i usually have is yeah. the customers will be uh giving some work to us so customers or some some high level people how do they know what quality do they want so they they cannot give the quality criteria right so how it comes how it have all sir so there are two things one is when you when the high level people will give a uh, um, requirement and all they will also say that you know we want to make sure there is no defects coming out of so that's one quality then you will have internal team which will say okay no p1 no p2 no p3 kind of things and they will have those acceptance criteria done so it needs to pass those acceptance criteria so both internal and external 
requirements are put in the QMS quality management strategy. Generally, a QMS is already defined in the organization and you just have to follow that. So what is this P1P2? I am not, I don't know, sir. P1P2 is nothing but when you create a project and you when you put it into the operations, then if defect comes, defects are classified as P1 and P2. What is defect? That it didn't perform as the way it should be expected. Let's say you buy a car. If you when once you start uh, riding the car, it suddenly stops. What you will do? You'll call the um, dealer, right? And say yeah. that this car has stopped. It is not working. So what he will do internally, he will raise a defect. That there is a defect in the pro pro in the product, and then they will classify like you can't move the car. So it's for you, it's a critical defect. Yeah. So critical defects are called P1 defects. So for your understanding, you just think that, you know, defects, if if the product is not performing, we raise defects and defects are classified as P1, P2s. Okay. P1 is critical, P2 is less critical, P3 is further less, P4 is like, okay, we can wait for next release. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at initiating project. May what does the project manager do? The project manager assembles the project initiation document and includes the following information. As I was telling, the project PID will have everything. It will have the project brief. It will have the project management team structure, role description, business case. Also, it will have four management strategy document, quality configuration, risk communication, project plan, project approval. So whatever we discussed, everything should be inside one document, which is called PID. Generally, we don't write everything in PID. We will put links to these document so that okay. you know you will have separate quality configuration, but link will be there in the PID document. Okay. Why does it help to provide a link rather than put everything in document? Because you can independently write other documents and you don't have to make changes to the original document. Okay. Sir, uh... Mm. Why this PID document, will this document be again approved? No, no, it is not approved. It is it is something project manager has to create and do. But project manager sometimes sends the PID document to business or to the executive for his information. But that is not to be approved. It is only for information and review. Okay, because it's already been the, the all the contents has already been approved. Or, yes, okay. uh, approved and it is, you know, project manager to do manage that. But it should be there. You cannot start a project initiation without a PID. You will be beaten. Okay. Yeah. Next is project assurance. Project assurance will check the contain, will check that it contains the necessary information and can be put forward to project board. So assurance is just to verify that all documents are there so that we can put it to the project board. The last task done by project managers to request to deliver a project. The request is made by to the project board that they will decide if the project can continue or stop. That's what this the request can be formal and informal. Now that it's in the initiation, the project board has already approved. Now this document can be formal or informal also. You can informally tell that it is there, and then project board will say board will say in 99% of the cases they approve, only 1% they will or not approve if they had given a conditional go during the SU of the project. Sometimes you get a conditional OK. Then I'm OK, but we don't have enough information. So it's a conditional go. In the initiation, once you put everything together, we'll further review. And we may or may not approve for the next stage. But those okay. are called conditional approvals. Because the SU is conditionally approved. OK. Yeah, they're saying it is conditionally approved. So will this type of cases happen, sir? Very rare. Say, let's say 5% of so if there are 100 projects happening, five projects will only go through this. 95 will go through that. Yeah. Because you are why they will not do because initiating a project, you will have to have a project manager team and also a lot of cost is involved. Okay. So, you know, somebody has to bear the cost. In SU, the cost is very, very less because you just have 1% doing the work. Here you have the team, project manager, you'll spend three months. So a lot of cost is involved. So only very rare case where it is critical and they're not able to take a take a decision, they will go through this. Sir, uh, generally how long this initiating a project lasts generally in IT? It will be 
Yeah, it should be in general formula is three times the SU. So if the SU has taken one month, then it should take three months. If SU has been one week, then it should be three weeks. That's a general, but not necessary. It depends. Okay. Sir, one last one. Sir. Hmm. sir, initiating a project is, uh, for ex uh, I will tell an example, sir. Uh, we work for some PwC uh, in U USA, sir. Hmm. They, they gave some, uh, some, like, some email saying that you have to do this for me, like that. Okay. So, so we, we came till the initiating project. Okay. So I want to know till now who is funding us is, is till now because the project is not yet uh, been like so till now we company has to incur some uh, project like the expenses right so will the customer oh. provide or this our company has to bear this till this part type thing like not the work started yet no see if it is an outsourcing company like wipro accenture and all those things they will call that as a pre sale activity and they will bear the cost if it is a company like internal, like a Microsoft doing Microsoft project or Facebook or doing their own project, then they will be funded by the cost, internal costs. So it depends which which particular company is. So you are saying it for you, it is a PwC project, Price Waterhouse Cooper. And what is your company? Which is your company? Is it a part of PwC or it's a? No, sir, no, no. It's it's like IT consulting firm. So they uh, work like that. So work like if the PwC is already hired and under TNM like time and material, then it will be cost will be already will be incurred by PwC. If your consulting company is doing a fixed price project, then this will be considered under uh, pre-sales and your company will bear the cost. So oh, that's okay. why they say that try to make it as small as possible so that the cost is less. Yeah, then after this initiative project only the the companies when the when the when we start delivering products they will yeah. charge us right yeah ideally initiating also should be charged but it depends you know some customer may say no i will not pay i will only pay when you start developing it all depends how you negotiate okay it depends there mm. but in an ideal condition yeah initiation of the project should be sponsored somebody should pay for it Okay. That's why I was saying only 5% of project they try to cancel after initiation because they would have already incurred some cost. Already, only, yeah. If, yeah, only if it is really not worth waste of time, money, and they don't have funding, they will stop it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now let's go to the next stage, which is called controlling a project. So controlling a project is nothing but it is to make sure that whatever you've agreed is delivered. So that is calling controlling a stage. Okay, how you control a stage. So the purpose of controlling a stage process is to assign work to be done to the specialist team, monitor such work, manage risk and issue, report progress of the stage of the project board. If required, take corrective action to ensure that the stage remains within tolerance in terms of the six aspect, which is scope, time, cost, risk, quality and benefit. The objective of controlling a stage Process is to ensure that attention is focused on delivering the product, keep risk issues under control, keep the business case under review, deliver the product for the stage to be agreed quality within agreed cost, time, and achieve the design. So controlling a stage is a is a, like an overlay. It will happen parallelly. So like initiating a project will also have controlling a stage. You will have to do this process to make sure that you're initiating a project starts and finishes on time and it delivers what is required to do so okay. if you go with the if if i go back i'll show you the picture if you see uh, so if you see for example huh, see here controlling a stage will start the moment you are you know one stage is over and so it will be parallel see initiating a project is there and then you start with controlling a project under that stage. Under that, there will be project. Again, you will have controlling a stage under that managed product delivery. So controlling a stage is to make sure that these things happen on time. A particular stage is delivered after initiating of a project. Okay, sir. Okay. This, you told that this is a part of a little bit or a part of initiating a project. Uh, so that is uh, that is um, just after that it will start. What will be that is the stage boundaries. Actually, it is slightly different. Controlling a stage will immediately start after initiating. So 
you generally don't in practical you don't say that okay today is last day of initiation tomorrow i will start controlling controlling will start once you are trying to finish initiation so that they know uh, this is going to finish and next has to start yeah. in practice slightly different it will be it will not be cut like that yes and in in reality the things are different slightly different yeah okay now let's read this can you read this controlling yes. a stage next slide huh the key activities performed in this process are authorize a work package as a result of approval of a stage or an exception plan by the board obtain the product product descriptions of the entire product to be included in the work package and define the techniques process procedures to be used review a work state work package status through checkpoint reports and receive the completed work package Hmm. Review the team plan with team manager to forecast whether the work will be completed on time and budget. Hmm. Review the project initiation document for the project control such as reporting methods required, quality management strategy, and review the stage stage report, stage status, highlight report, and take corrective actions if required. Watching for assessing and dealing with issues and risks. This include maintaining issues. Uh, and issue register escalating the issues risks so controlling a stage starts after initiation and what you will do is now you will create something called a work package work package is nothing but you know you will put what has to be delivered in that particular stage right so that is all put, goes under a work work package kind of thing and then you will ask team to pick up the work package and deliver it okay so that is there you will have a team plan with team manager forecasting whether the work will be completed on time review so basically when you before you start development you will do a control of a phase stage so that you know that your products are getting delivered as required type of thing so it's more like a governance on top of any del uh, delivery or any development that happens so any question product description Uh, what is the product description? So, the product description is nothing but the requirements that you have. Okay. So, requirements means sir, like what? What the? What you need to deliver? What, what are the? As per the business case or as per the? As per the business case or as per the requirement? Yeah. Now, controlling a stage quality standards required configuration management strategy how products to be handed over, review the product quality trigger the new work package or updating the existing one. review entries of quality register related to products in the work package to understand the current status of quality management act to ensure that each product or work package has gained its required approval confirm the configuration item records update the stage plan to show that work package is completed review stage plan current stage of product to be produced cost effect so it's nothing but it is same thing it is how you will govern how you will make sure quality is there product quality reviewing and also it is more like a governance on top of that you have put controlling a stage and it happens more than once so each time you have managing product deliveries you will have a controlling a stage yes sir you will understand as you understand the next process yes sir only one doubt sir here uh, uh, you have you have like uh, saying that uh, the we will be discussing the work with the teams like the other correct. part of teams Correct. sir how this real really happens sir like how can we ensure that this quality and all those things and the products are met and how this will be in line with our budgets and also this is like it the, they have planned with high level things and now they are like shrinking to very small levels so how this yeah. so what happens is generally controlling a stage we will put let's say every one month or every three months so every one month three months we will do a internal audit in an internal audit some people will come and do quality checks to make sure that you are following the quality management strategy that was followed they will check what is the cost that has incurred so much are we online so this can be done by doing an internal or an external audits that is how in practice it happens in organization okay. auditors will come and do it somebody will audit your things it's like you know you are you are doing in uh, reading a you know in a college then uh, you will have to give an exam to prove that you have learned correct so the same way you will have auditors who will audit it and they do all these checks sometimes you can have within the team or you can ask from a cross functional auditor to come and check 
so this will so yes yeah, sir while i was working also some people has come and asked some random questions but that people are like the friends of the project manager like that ah that is fine so in practice they may do like that also but uh, in an ideal case you should get somebody who is not part of the project to come and verify because he will not be biased yes sir that's that's what happened they are like talking each other hmm others so will be biased uh let's go to managing project delivery ha huh? any questions okay, sir will these people uh, give some instructions like uh, yeah they will give are... their observation or ncrs observations is something that it is not critical but you please try to follow them or create an action for the next ncr is non conformance report that you are not conforming to what you have agreed so if there is an ncr then you will have to go back and make changes and get the ncr removed okay yes sir so they may give a non conformance that you are not conforming to the budget or budget is high or your people are not there or something like that they may give. okay sir Yeah, and then it gets escalated to big management that this project has five NCR, and then you know all the big bosses will come and shout. Yes, sir. Now managing product delivery process. So this is again after initiation, it will happen. You will define what delivery you need to do. So managing product delivery will be below the controlling a uh, um, controlling a stage, controlling stage. So, what do you do under manage delivery process? Can you read the purpose and the objective of manage con managing product delivery process? The, pur the purpose of the management product delivery process is to manage and control the work between the project manager and the team manager by placing certain formal requirements on the accepting, executing, and delivering a product. Correct. Objectives. The objectives of the managing product delivery process is to ensure that. products assigned to the team are authorized and agreed the team is clear about what has to be produced and understands the effort time and cost the planned products are delivered to the expectations and within tolerance accurate progress information is provided to the project manager by team manager hmm so basically managing product delivery you have to think like doing a uh, development of a project okay. so you need to know which team is assigned what well thing to do the team is clear what they need to develop in terms of effort time and cost the planned products are delivered to the expectation within tolerance within tolerance means that uh, you know sometimes it may happen that you may you may say that okay this is okay if there are two defects i'm still okay but if there are more than two defects i'm not okay so that tolerance is there okay. an accurate progress information is provided by project manager by the to the project manager by the team manager so development team will provide accurate information of this so this is like a development it's a phase of development sir here um, mm. in managing product delivery so the project manager will assign work to the team right sir yes, then yes. the teams will keep on doing so uh, how do they track take care of the time and the money like a part time money this yeah the project manager will work okay. very very closely with the team right so he will know that this the plan was to finish this activity in 5 weeks okay. and we are finishing 4 weeks and still a lot of work is left that means we are out of schedule so he will start pushing pulling people getting more people to work spend 12 hours 14 hours 20 hours to finish the work that's how he will do it ah uh, that's how some people will work long or some people yeah yeah because it's not properly planned and project manager has been sleeping then last minute you have to do all these okay that's why it is important to accurately do the progress information should be provided so that corrective actions can be taken okay sir uh we discussed this key activities in this pro process our work on product allocated to the team is authorized and agreed so work is distributed between the people team and all team manager team member suppliers are clear to and what do they need to produce and what is expected in effort cost and time scale so it may happen that it's not just your internal team there may be some vendors also imply in, involved who may be supplying or giving something so they sometimes it happens that more than one team is there so you have your team plus infosys or wipro is also working on it so they should also be clear what they need to deliver the planned products are delivered to the expectation within tolerance accurate progress information 
in the form of checkpoint receive a report is provided to project manager as an agreed frequency to ensure that expectations are managed so product delivery is nothing to manage the dev development so you need to allocate job you need to make sure that people are following the effort cost time scale and that that is ma manually managed expectations that they deliver and that is within the tolerance and accurately we are updating the progress okay. any questions here yeah there is no question sir what is the checkpoint report sir the checkpoint report is nothing but uh, if you have agreed to do five activities in one month so we'll do a check to see if all five activities has been done or not okay within the quality yeah within for the quality guide part of it sir what happens if there is an issue or uh, they are unable to do one one work which is not ah uh, so then they they should raise it in the risk register that they are not able to do this because there is a risk involved Uh, and then uh, you know they will all sit together and try to uh, mitigate the risk or put an action if the risk turns into an issue that it has already happened then they need to go back and agree what needs to be done so for example they may say okay we will uh, keep it aside we will put it into the next project or we'll descope it or we'll find a solution we may need some help from a third party we'll get third party involved and do it so that's why it is important to have a updated risk and uh, issue and a project manager should discuss with the team every 3 days one week kind of thing on all this thing so that's how they will manage it so will this descoping will not affect the business case and all no it depends if suppose there is some issue and it is not going to be uh, impact your core okay. deliverables then it is fine you can do that okay but definitely you have to take an agreement of all the stakeholders and the executive okay right sir okay managing stage boundary so now that we have done with managing product delivery now there is this stage is called stage boundaries so when you are moving from one uh, managing product delivery to another managing product delivery you have to manage the stage boundary so that you know clearly you have finished one and you are going into new one it's like a checkpoint it's a gate gate checkpoint okay just read this managing stage boundaries yeah, okay. quickly the purpose of managing a stage boundary process has two parts two the parts, project yeah. manager the project manager has to provide the project board with certain information the outputs of the stage boundary process are all for are all for the project board correct this information will enable the project board to review the current stage and approve the next stage review updated project plan and confirm continued business justification Correct. the main objectives of the managing a stage boundary process gives an overview of the main work that the project manager must do which is mm. assure the project board that all products in the current stage are produced and approved correct review and update if necessary these documents which are the project initiation documentation business case project plan and risk register record any lessons in the lessons log that can help the later stages of the project future projects prepare the stage plan for next stages and request authorization to start the next stage hmm. so basically managing a stage boundaries in practice happens like a a small meeting which will be there wherein they will say that we have finished one stage we have done this delivery it is as per expectation we are on time schedule and all we need a we need to go into the next stage of development so kindly approve types so it may be formal or it could be informal also it is not necessary that you have to have a project board and all executive can also approve to go into next thing why it is required it is required because so that you know whatever you have given in the last stage is all approved and now you can start focusing on the next stage of development it's yeah. just a check gate it's just a boundary check that you have finished one you are entering into another yes, sir here it is written sir uh, review and update if necessary the usual documents which are the project initiation document business case plan register and risk register correct so basically what will happen is after you finish something you may need to do some update like for example you have agreed that you can finish the project instead of 5 weeks you will finish in 4 weeks so you'll go and update the project initiation document business case proved you'll change the project plan you'll change the, so you keep updating these documents these are all working documents okay
so any changes after one stage managing product uh, product delivery you will have to go and update if required not necessary that you have to always update sometimes yes, you may be following as per whatever is there then you don't need to update okay so because of this sometimes uh, the project might extend also right like it yeah, might yeah. it may extend also then also you have to go and update your paid business case and all because it may have a negative impact if you do it faster business case may may go more if you have ne- if you're delaying it may have a negative impact but still business case may have buffer that it can still uh, you know take that shock so then it is fine nobody bothers okay sir how this happens in agile that the the in agile process so this agile is, is totally different this is all waterfall process okay in agile we don't use prince to and all in agile we use safe safe in agile yeah agile there is no boundaries like that so that's why agile is very simple and easy this is little more process oriented and you know strict boundaries and things like that okay so that they cannot combine this and all yeah yeah in agile it is more agile you will have requirements coming you will do iterations and all so that i will take you through in a next yes. another training yeah, yeah okay. i don't want to mention it here otherwise it will confuse you yeah it gets confused yeah yeah it gets here you have to understand it is very structured Yes, sir. And in uh, very process oriented, that's why UK and all love Prince too because they like a very formal structure, process oriented. Yeah, you are right, sir. <laughs> Now, following the activities performed by project manager in managing a stage boundary, ensure communicate, ensure and communicate to the project board that all products in the stage plan for the current stage has been completed, approved, review, and if necessary, see that's why if necessary. update the pid in a particular business case in particular the business case project plan project approval strategies project management team structure and role description if necessary you will go and update the pid document okay sir. so the question may come what what are there in the pid document so you should know a pid document will consist of business case project plan project mm-hmm. approach uh, all kind of strategy quality configuration and all project management team structure and role descriptions oh this is a big one big document hmm it's a big document yeah yes sir can we stop here sir like after this uh let's finish the managing how anyway one more slide so we can yeah. stop here so just can you read this managing a stage yeah. boundary provide the information needed for the project board to assess the continuous viability of the project and aggregate it risk such as an end end stage report produced by the project manager gives to the project board outlining the information on the current stage achievements mm-hmm. the current stage plan actuals sh- showing the project performance against the original stage plan an updated risk register together with updated business case and the project plan which is used by the project board to review the project has continuous ongoing viability an updated configuration item required in the project status account any changes to the project management team with updated job descriptions right so it's nothing but you know you just go and update whatever you have done so far you'll update your configurable items risk registers and all so this is a very small uh, stage process that happens sir what is this continuous viability every time it, it is coming like yeah, how they is ongoing viability that means you have to keep checking whether the business case is still valid do we have still benefit that question that i told you earlier that you have to keep asking why we are doing this project what are the benefits what are the risk that you have to keep asking otherwise what will happen is you may continue doing project but project is not required okay sir generally that, what 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 is the content of this end stage report sir like what do the, what does it contain generally which one sorry the second one sir end stage report produced end stage report means that you have completed one stage like one development has finished so in that project manager will give the project board outlining what they have achieved in one board one stage so you may de- divide your entire development into three stage in first development you will write you will create a portal in second development you will create a user login in third you will put the features so you can say that in first delivery or first uh, you know development we have done this so that information you have to update end stage report is one development is completed and ticked now we will start looking at the second development within the project yeah okay sir okay okay yeah. you want to stop here huh? yeah sir sir can you give me some practical work 
for all these things that we have completed. I will just write or something and show you tomorrow or some other day when you ask. So my suggestion is say, go ahead in your document and read these processes. Okay. okay. And try and see if you can get any PID document that you have seen from this thing. I'll see if I can find some PID document yes. and I'll share. Yes, absolutely. So sir. You can go through the PID document. That's all yeah. is required. Okay, sir. So last time you told me to go through those three chapters, right? Uh, so I was I was able to go through two only, sir. It's it's very big, sir. Uh, no, then you will start understanding. So I think you you must have done uh, starting of project and initiation. So yes, today sir. you please go through controlling and managing product delivery and managing stage boundaries. Okay, you yes. will understand. And for tomorrow, please go through closing a project and directing a project these two you please do and then we will go into themes this is important sections where we'll go into what is a business case sir for tomorrow sorry sir i could not hear but tomorrow you please do uh, two closing a project and directing a project closing a project directing a project. okay and then what we will do is we'll go into themes tomorrow we'll start business case only because we, let me make you understand how what is a business case and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, okay. So go ahead and do that, and uh, I'll see if I can find some PID document and send. Okay. Otherwise, if you find any PID, then you can go through that. Okay. Problem. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. So is this is the uh, speed?